So this is the interview that I was talking about in the other video, but John works at Strummer. He's 17. He goes to high school. He spent his summer with us. He is an amazing kid. He is wicked smart. So watch this video, listen to him talk about just programming in general, feel his enthusiasm for it. And it's a little hard to tell because he's a shy guy, but he is an awesome, wicked smart kid. Check him out. Also visit Strummer TV where you've got a couple more videos of John and all of the videos that I've been doing lately. So check that out. Here's the video. We shot it in this studio. It's great. You don't have to feel bad. I, I, I'm getting older and I get this, this thinning hair spot and he lights me up and he shoots me from high and then I slouch and then I just look <laughs> like an old dude. Yeah. Treasure your youth. That's what I'm telling you. Like, yeah, I was that skinny and that tall when I was in high school. <laughs> and you can maintain that and you turn 26 and you turn into this. Just... <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, dude. It's coming. <laughs> the metabolism falls off. Your memory starts to go. You can't learn the new languages as fast. The world changes. I remember when there was only functionalized programming. You're going back to functionalized programming. Like, I think that's part of the reason you and I get along so well in like writing code stuff is you like functions and I like functions and like everybody else in the office is all object oriented. Mm -hmm. So why do you like functions? Cause that, that, that's old school. Like, well, I think functions are sufficient for, for most programming. I mean, you can just throw around functions with a, a map and a filter and a reduce and <laughs> maybe some partial application and that, that handles most of your work. I grew up on VB and so I was doing object oriented programming and because I was working with Aaron who's very object oriented, I was just doing dot lower in my Python code and you profiled my code and you know, how, how much difference did it make? It was, I think it, in, in the over 10 seconds at least, you know, just yeah, because in my day VB cached that stuff and it was like, oh, you've made an object, it's a new object. We're going to cache that thing because you might want it in the next line or the next three lines. And Python, not so much. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, it's supposed to be a feature, I think, just a fast GC to get rid of that. But the, the, then that GC, that GC string is replaced with the same exact memory <laughs> soon after and the entire operation repeats and repeats and repeats. And yeah, and so we were doing dot lower and I was probably running it. How many, like, you did a count, like, 80% of the time was me converting stuff to lowercase. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you write, you write very concise, very logical code. And how do you think, and you can be honest, I don't, do I? <laughs> we have different styles, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> we have different styles. You write pretty code, I write ugly code. <laughs> but you kind of think that way, like you, you structure your code well and you have the, you know, everything down cold. And part of that's your dev environment. So tell me just a little bit about what your dev environment is. Okay. Um, I am an Emacs geek to the fullest. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have spent a few, a few years now obsessively uh, configuring, you know, write, writing Lisp code to get everything exactly how I want it. And I love it. There's there's absolutely nothing that could replace it, including Vim. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's just no substitute when you can run your test suites, you can run a command line, you can write a custom function to do something you want just for just for a day or two. You don't need to go and find somebody that spent a month to make a tool. You can just make a tool right there in an hour an hour or so. It's it's just so fast <laughs> to make your own tools to help you out. And you, like a, and you use that as your environment regardless of which language you're working in. Because yeah. you were doing JavaScript and Objective-C and all of those things in the same tool. As much as possible, actually. Well, I mean, with Objective-C, you have to be in Xcode to deploy another device. But, but, you, but you were writing the code in Emacs and then deploying with Xcode. Mm -hmm. It was an annoying alt-tab alt combination. Unfortunately, you can't script that because, <laughs> at least not in Emacs list. Right, so you have... You know, one IDE for everything, whereas me being old and 
not being willing to do all the stuff. I adopted the IDE that the rest of the developers wanted to use, and so I'm in PyCharm, and I love Emacs, and I loved Emacs because I'm a Lisp guy, and I, it's amazing to me to hear somebody under 30 use the word Lisp. You know, just tell me about Lisp and why you like Lisp. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> well, my interest in Lisp started with Clojure, of course. Um, and from Clojure, that's where actually where I discovered Emacs. Um, well, not where I discovered Emacs, but what actually convinced me to get into Emacs. Start, start with the, the people that are your age and don't have your experience. T what's Clojure? Okay. Clojure is a Lisp um, running on the JVM. That's the Java Virtual Machine. Same thing that runs Java bytecode runs Clojure bytecode. Um, so you write Lisp and it compiles to JVM bytecode. When you run a Clojure program, it runs on the JVM. Um, the thing that makes Clojure distinctive is its suite of functional programming tools. Basically, its standard library is a functional programming tool. Um, and the thing that really sets it apart from other functional programming languages, like Haskell or OCaml or whatever, is its concurrency library. I mean, other, other functional programming languages have good libraries for concurrency, but Rich Hickey, the inventor of Clojure, had some really good ideas, I think. Um, about isolating state from the rest of your program. Um, and he made some really interesting um, tools to help with that, refs and agents. So some things like agents aren't exactly unique to Clojure, but they fit in really well with, with the rest of the standard library. There's, there's even uh, syntactic sugar for, for inserting, dereferencing um, atoms into your code. So it's this concurrency is built into the into the language, so it's made for very high performance, high stress systems. Um, it's not exact. I wouldn't say it's ready for us, for example. It's not ready for like really, really high level production, but it's getting there. And I, I hope someday. I mean, it'll bring Lisp to the forefront of. <laughs> That's probably a, a list, list that is really old is yeah. going to be in the forefront again. And what's interesting about this is most people your age are looking at Node. And Node <laughs> Node is the like anti-closure. Sure. Isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it fits for a few applications. And I Node or closure? Node. Right. I can't say closure fits for, it doesn't fit for, for an application either, just like Java fits for only a few and it's really whatever language fits for your environment, that's what you should be using. And Python works great for us. Clojure wouldn't work that great for us. Node would definitely not work <laughs> that great for us. I, I, I don't think Node's a bad system. It's just I not, do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not a good fit for a lot of systems. Right. And you know, I say that, but we are using Node in some of the stuff that we're doing because we're using it as a debugging tool primarily, correct? You're using We are. Oh, you you aren't. I'm not. Okay, Craig was using Node because Craig was using Node. Oh, I see. For, with the winery, yes. Yes, with the so winery. So we technically are. Yeah, I guess we we are using Node. Um, but really, mostly for debugging kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, one of the tools we use called Winery um, runs a Node server in the background. But I can't say we're really programming in, in JavaScript. Right. I, I have that video where I hate on Node and it gets like 10,000 views every day and people threaten to kill me. So I wanted to put out there that we do use Node and mm -hmm. I'm not just a Node hater because I'm old. There are, there are young people who will at least say it's not the right tool for everything and that we didn't need to use it. <laughs> it's really it's just a matter of, of before you get started, think about what tool is right for the job. Node could fit, or Clojure could fit, or Python could fit, or C Sharp could fit. Or... Yeah. Well, and we tested with Go. We did. And, and what did you find out about Go? It was slower than Python. We, we thought originally that it was faster, um, but once we re removed that <laughs> string.lower fix, it actually made Python way, way faster. It was by a factor of two, I think, Go was slower than Python. In, this was in, in string, string manipulation and regu reg regular expressions and that sort of thing. And, and you just ported, the, I mean, you pretty much just ported the code over from Python to Go to retest. And that was on one of the slowest functions in our Python that you were doing the test. So, I mean, that was, that was really how you did your profiling. Yeah, it was just a rough port. I mean, it, it, there wasn't really much code in that, in that module. It was just a lot of data and then... But 
when we were doing the profiling and such, that was like the function that was taking the most time. It was the thing that we were doing most often. So, you know, we had really identified this is the slow part and will it be fast run go? Is that fair to say? Yeah, that was the bottleneck at that point at least. We've, we've discovered other bottlenecks now. 